Right now and into the future, I'm going to keep banging the drum on the point that the Liberal Party and the NDP cannot win the 2025 election. And you might be thinking, why? You're being really overconfident. There's still a year and a half before the next election. They could easily come back. The media will spin the good news for the Liberals. They'll release some sort of propaganda campaign. They'll pivot on this or that policy, and they'll make a get-out-the-vote effort in order to tighten it back up. Well, yes, the polls might tighten a little bit before the next election. When you look under the hood in these recent polls that have been coming out, the Liberal Party and the NDP have a massive confidence problem within their own base. It's not just that the Conservatives are taking a 15-point lead over the Liberals. It's the fact that Liberal Party supporters and NDP supporters are unlikely to even show up in the next election. There's all these people saying that, well, NDP voters might vote Liberal in order to try and stop the Conservatives. Guys, like voters are not that analytical. There's a reason that people vote for the Green Party, despite the fact that there's only two ridings they can ever win in. It's because a lot of people just vote for what they like, even if that party's not going to win in their area. Most people just happen to like the conservatives, liberals, or the NDP. And these days, they really like the conservatives, and they hate the liberals and the NDP. So here is what the new Abacus data poll shows. The Conservatives are at 40%, 15-point lead over the Liberals, 25, and the NDP has 20. Uh, the Bloc is at 8, and obviously that's just in Quebec, so they're pretty much just going to maintain the amount of seats they have right now and pretty much just take them out of contention for the Liberals since the Liberals are right now in second in uh, Quebec. But that's bad enough. It, but what's even worse, even worse than the Liberals' terrible fundraising numbers is the regionals. Now look at these right here. In BC, the Liber the Conservatives are at 40%, with the, the NDP at 32 behind them because of the NDP provincial government. That's horrible for the Liberals. The Liberals should be either in first or second in BC if they want to win the election. In Ontario, the Conservatives are at 43, with the Liberals are only at 29. And obviously, that's just because the city of Toronto votes Liberal really hard. The north and south of Ontario are going to go fully blue. There's barely anything the Liberals can do to stop them. In Quebec, yes, the, the Conservatives are only at 17 points, but the Bloc's leading with 35, and the Liberals are at 30. That's a, another uh, province. If the Liberals want to form a majority, they need to be beating the Bloc. In Atlantic Canada, you have 43 for the Conservatives, 33 for the Liberals. Atlantic Canada, as we knew in 2015, used to be a clean sweep for the Liberals. I think in 2019, the Conservatives won like a single seat. That is maybe not the most seat-rich area of the country, but if you're the Liberals and you want to form government, you need to be doing well in Ontario, Atlantic Canada, and in BC. There's a reason that Abacus throws in this statistic uh, or this chart into their polls showing that between BC, Ontario, and Atlantic Canada, the Conservatives are on average polling 42%, and the Liberals only 27. And they do this because those are the three major provinces, basically the swing state type provinces Canada has. And when you're that far behind, when you're literally, you know, 15 points behind in the swing provinces, that's death. That's death for your party. But in a second, I'm going to get to the confidence polling. And this is where it goes from bad to nightmarish for the Liberals. But first, I just want to do a quick shameless plug and say that I, Wyatt Claypool, am running for the Conservative Party of Canada's nomination for the Calgary Signal Hill riding. If you leave, live in this riding, except for the Bowness and Greenbrier areas because they're being removed when riding boundaries change in April because Alberta is getting a few more ridings. If you live in this area, buy a Conservative Party membership and vote for me. My website's in the description below, wyattclaypool.com. Sign up to the email list if you live in the area or if you live around the riding but not in it, you can sign up to be a volunteer, come door knocking and whatnot with me. We want actual blue Conservatives representing strong ridings like Signal Hill, not wispy red Tories who were pro-lockdown five minutes ago and pro Aaron O'Toole and now suddenly they're big poly of people even though to a certain extent they privately scorn him behind the scenes. Anyways, Getting back to it, this poll result is the thing that should really have the Liberals and NDP, uh, you know, up late at night worrying. So we have the Conservatives has a 74% certainty to vote for their party. Same thing with the Bloc. These are two parties that are doing strong in the areas. Uh, like obviously, the Bloc only runs in Quebec, but these are two area. These two parties have a very strong base of support. The Liberals only have a 61% confidence rating with their supporters. 59 with the NDP. When you're only a little bit over half of your supporters are certain to vote for you, that's horrible. 
Because that means that the liberals and the NDP, they're going to have to spend money just making sure that their base shows up. They cannot get new voters. They cannot develop new support bases because they're going to have to spend their small budgets, considering their fundraising so bad, they're going to have to spend their relatively small budgets to the conservatives, just making sure that they can realize these 25 and 20 percent support numbers. That's the biggest problem for the NDP over time is that their, their voter confidence sucks and their fundraising sucks. And so they're having to spend money just trying to drive out the few people who will actually vote for the NDP. So they always end up underperforming their actual polling numbers. The liberals are now in that situation. They could easily underperform that 25% in the polls because one, their budgeting is horrible. And two, their voters think they're going to lose anyway. So the liberals are going to have to do crazy, like tr crazy intense door knocking efforts in order to make sure the people that like them will even bother showing up and casting a ballot because they think Polyev is already the prime minister, basically. And that's where maybe conservatives shouldn't be too overconfident. You don't want to think, oh, I'm going to go on vacation during the election and not vote. Definitely vote. Definitely show up and do your duty. Everyone should. But this is where I don't think conservatives need to be too concerned about Justin Trudeau and Jagmeet Singh tinkering a little bit with the voting process rules. It's all kind of a nothing burger. Maybe there's going to be an extra day or two of voting. Maybe it's going to be a little bit easier to vote in different polling stations in your riding. It's not going to amount to anything. The liberals cannot change any rules. They cannot release any propaganda campaigns, any of the stuff I've talked about in order to bring it back. And when you've looked at the attacks they're making on Pierre Polyev and how badly they've just fallen on their face, they obviously don't know what to do communications-wise. I'm not sure for any of you who are on X, did you see that massive blow-up a Liberal Party communications staffer had the other day just freaking out, saying the most vulgar things possible because these people are flailing and every time people criticize them now, they don't know what to say, so they, they just get righteously indignant and start freaking out and getting mad and calling you terrible names and using just vulgar terminology, like like vulgar to the point of being like medical. Uh, these people are do not have their heads screwed on straight. There's a reason why we have polls like that old Angus Reid one that came out last week uh, that showed that the Conservatives might win 222 seats. Another poll just came out from Main Street that showed that they would win 220 seats. Th these polling trends are not here because polling firms are rigging it for the Conservatives. Polling firms, and this is why I trust most polling firms, I don't like their policy polling. They word the question so badly that the policy polling comes useless, and there's no way of actually proving if it's accurate or not because there's no voting day on these policies. But generally, the national numbers are accurate because the polling firms specifically are just demonstrating how good they are at polling by doing this free uh, national political polling so that they can sell their market research services to companies. Uh, so whenever people like whenever there's a poll result that shows that the liberals are doing a little bit better, it's not because people are rigging it. If anything, if they tried to rig it and then it was shown that they were wrong, nobody would hire them ever again. Uh, the polling firms in Canada tend to be quite accurate because there's not to a certain extent, money to pay them off to sweeten their polls a little bit the way that there is in the United States. Like people, like United States, like the Republicans and Democrats hire polling firms to put out polls for them. In Canada, nobody ever really pays for a polling firm. They might pay for some internal polling, but no one's going to try and like rig a poll. You could just look like a fool for trying to do it. But yeah, this really all demonstrates, and hopefully I don't end up rambling on too much here, but confidence really matters. Being able to prove that you believe you're going to win is actually a very important thing to do in politics. That's why I, even though sometimes when I'm door knocking, you every once in a while get a voter who says, well, I don't like how Paul Oliev is criticizing the liberals so much. And he sometimes comes off as a little arrogant. I don't think he actually does. I think that's just the media spin of, uh, he's strident and arrogant. It's because Pierre Polyev is coming off as confident and he is coming off as sort of ascendant. He's criticizing the liberals to basically put down sort of the confidence in the liberals. You need to do that. One, he has to prove he's not like Aaron O'Toole and some pansy who's going to betray conservative voters. And two, he basically has to go after liberal party supporters and say, your party's failing you. Your party did like uh, has done all this economic damage. They've done all this societal division, uh, divisional damage. They've like increased crime, all this stuff. That's why Polly have called out Toronto voters for voting liberal because he has to he has to kind of weaken that resolve and confidence that the that the liberals are the party of Torontonians. He has to prove that they've actually been hurting you. You have to actually wake up one day and realize that you actually might need to vote for a party that might actually serve your best interests, which are lowering taxes, making life more affordable, reducing crime, reducing drug use and all this stuff. 
Yes, he might come off as kind of arrogant, but confident people tend to run that risk of seeming arrogant. And party confidence, this voter confidence I brought up, is key. The, the conservatives are at 74% and probably rising because their, their own voters see that Polyev seems strong and confident. If he was like Aaron O'Toole or Andrew Scheer and he had the same personality, you probably the conservative vote would probably be around only 70, maybe you know, 64 percent confidence because they, they looked weak. They looked like they could be pushed over by Justin Trudeau, even if voters completely agreed with them. Not as much O'Toole. He sucked. But with Andrew Scheer, overall, his policy was actually quite good, but he never came off like the guy who's going to be prime minister. You got to you have to act like you're going to be the prime minister one day or everyone's going to say, well, that guy can't be prime minister. He doesn't look like he's even confident in the things he's saying right now. Ugh. Anyways, maybe that was a little bit too much rambling. I apologize. Anyways, in the description of this video below, we have the Give, Send, Go link for our legal fundraiser. We have a billionaire suing us, some developer from China. Uh, he has no evidence we defamed him, but he's throwing money at us to try and get us to fake apologize to him. We're not going to do that. We don't get bullied. But if you want to help contribute to our legal fund, it really helps us out. We're easily winning this case. My own lawyers have told me that, yeah, they would be fools to try and bring this to court, and they probably won't. They're just throwing paperwork at me at this point. Our entire guest writers reporting on that mentioned this guy was all based on a Globe and Mail story that came out almost two years before that it did a detailed breakdown of all the things he was up to, in which he basically is confirmed as all true, but he just thinks it's still defamatory to mention it. Uh, ridiculous. But if you want to do donate to that Give, Send, Go campaign, really helps me in the National Telegraph out. And then also repeating myself again, I, Wyatt Claypool, am running in the Calgary Signal Hill riding. So if you don't live in the, if you live in the riding and not in the Greenbrier Bonus areas, buy a membership, support me, check out my website, whiteclaypool.com in the description below. And I'll see you guys later in another video.